Hi, I thought I would make an other space plane video because of the changes in 103. And this is what I came up with. This is experimental 8. So there are these nose cones on the rapiers. This is called rapier spike engine. And uh, this is uh, to uh, decrease drag. And we have uh, this uh, cargo bay and docking port, uh, some RCS uh, and and the uh, intakes are a less, uh, less efficient shock cones but uh, with the engine changes uh, we have enough oxygen with these but we need less drag uh, because uh, the thrust weight ratio is uh, smaller than it was before it's under one actually and as we go higher it goes down to around 0 0.6 and that is really small but uh, as the drag is smaller uh, we can uh, just rely on the wings to keep us uh, in the air while the engines uh, start to uh, push us faster and faster all, all the time and yeah so as we get uh, closer uh, as we get to higher altitudes we get uh, higher thrust to weight ratios uh, and as we get around Mach 1 uh, we get these uh, 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 very long drag uh, arrows but you can see that there is no drag on the engines because of the nose cones completely counterintuitive uh, so as we pass Mach 1 the engines uh, uh, start to push us faster and faster up until more than uh, the thrust weight ratio of 3 and this heating looks quite serious but actually uh, in reality it isn't uh, barely anything gets hot anymore going up when you come down, now that's a hard thing. It really tries to fry you uh, without a heat, heat shield at least. So as uh, I lose thrust uh, on the jet side, I activated uh, the nuclear engine. And uh, for a while I could use the closed cycle mode of the uh, rapiers. At least uh, this is to the extent uh, of the oxidizer I had. Uh, to push me in a into a trajectory that has enough time for the nuclear engine to do its job and push me into the orbit uh, before I fall back because its uh, thrust weight ratio is not uh, very big but it's bigger in, in the previous plane because it, you can see that it's it's much uh, skinnier version so it's uh, easier to do it with this one and uh, there will be around 1700 uh, meters per second delta V left in this plus I could do 1800 I don't know how I did that but uh, this is a, a lot of Delta V we could even land on the moon with this one um, but uh, I chose to do uh, a Duna transfer again so here I'm just waiting for uh, the uh, circularization burn but anyway so what to do uh, to go to another planet uh, now this is more complicated than an orbital rendezvous but it is very similar uh, in essence so there are uh, there are orbits around the sun the same way as orbits around uh, a planet and they behave the same way so here we can see the Duna uh, is around 45 degrees in an advanced position to, uh, uh, compared to Kerbin and because it's uh, in an outer orbit it goes slower it's exactly the same uh, as with uh, uh, the docking tutorial we have to do a burn which is uh, prograde or in that sense uh, that it uh, is tangential uh, to the orbit of Kerbin but uh, it is to, to the forward direction so to which direction uh, Kerbin moves if we wanted to go to Eve it would be the reverse direction so uh, tangential but uh, backward uh, compared to the orbiting direction but doing a, an orbital transfer is harder we can time uh, the launch as I did it now so if I burn here on uh, the orbit uh, around Kermin I uh, just uh, push the fuel to the uh, uh, aft tank uh, so that uh, the nuclear engine doesn't get any hotter uh, anyway so we can do it here and I used Alex Moon's launch window planner for this um, and we get an exact encounter that way uh, there is also the other way uh, to just uh, 
do an escape any any time and uh, go to a solar orbit and wait there until I'm in a position to put uh, down a maneuver node uh, for an encounter. First of all, this could take a lot of time. Second, it uh, requires more fuel because uh, uh, of the Obert effect. Uh, we need less fuel when we burn down in the gravity well when we go faster, so in this case uh, in orbit around Kerbin. And so here it seems that uh, I had to uh, correct uh, some uh, inclination, so the plane uh, of my orbit, because Duna is almost orbiting in the same plane as uh, uh, Kerbin, but not, but not completely. So I had to do that, and the best place to do that is uh, the ascending or descending node. Uh, but this is not enough, I also need to move my uh, periapsis uh, close enough, and the best way to do that is uh, uh, prograde or retrograde burns, and not uh, 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 not uh, in the radial burst. Uh, yeah, I set up so that uh, set it up so that it's uh, around uh, 25 kilometers uh, periapsis for aero capture and uh, uh, as close to an equatorial orbit as I uh, can have. So basically, the, fa the farther we are from our target, the less fuel we need uh, for an uh, actual change. Uh, simply because uh, that little speed change will integrate over a longer time. And I use the, here the orbit of Ike to have a completely uh, equatorial uh, orbit. Good for me that it's, it's there, otherwise it would be harder. But anyway, uh, back to the topic, so uh, getting to an inclined orbit is harder because if I want to use the Obert effect, I, I want to time it so that uh, the phase angle is correct. Uh, I pushed the uh, fuel back to the forward tank for aerodynamic stability. So the phase angle is correct, but if the phase angle is correct, then uh, the other tar the target will not be in the correct position, and it will be out of my plane, and then I need to do a plane change, and that uh, wastes a lot of fuel. And if I time it so that uh, I will meet, it with, uh, meet its orbit uh, on the ascending or descending node where I don't have to do the plane change and the target will not be there at the time. So it's a compromise between the inclination uh, and the fuel wasted for inclination and uh, the fuel wasted uh, um, uh, for the uh, injection burn. So that's why it's actually a hard thing to do. That's why I use this uh, launch window planner tool. Uh, you can do it with phase angles, but phase angles are not really you don't care about phase angles. Phase angles are not, not important. What's important is the time when to do the burn and the delta V required at that burn. Anything else uh, is just a added complexity, a com co complication. You cannot really measure the phase angles in the game without a mod, for example. For Duna it's easy because it's 45 degrees, but uh, for other planets it's, uh, it's harder. So here is uh, the trajectory coming close uh, at my burn, and you can see that it dances around uh, 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 do not, and uh, this is uh, what makes it somewhat hard to do it without a maneuver node. Mm, it's it's not uh, an intuitive uh, uh, movement what it does, and uh, I use the uh, orbit of Ike again to help me. And it is a, this way. I was a little bit lower, uh, 24 kilometers orbit, but uh, or periapsis, but uh, completely uh, in in an equatorial plane. So what's left here is a very little uh, uh, correction, just to get 25 kilometers, 34 kilometers would have been enough because I was fighting it later. I realized here that if I do it correctly I could land just before darkness hits these uh, uh, planes, but I thought I would um, keep it safe, re-entry effect, so now we have this finally again on, uh, on Luna. Uh, but uh, uh, so I thought I would uh, make an arrow capture and then uh, keep myself in this high orbit uh, to wait for the uh, these uh, smooth planes uh, to get into the day side again. And this way I, I uh, raised my uh, periapsis to around 40 kilometers so that my air, air braking uh, will be less efficient and I need to do uh, more orbits, but this means with very little fuel I could time my uh, uh, final uh, orbit so 
uh, that uh, I will hit uh, the planes exactly when they are in the right position. They are just coming in. You can see from that crater uh, that is uh, east uh, from the planes, and I'm waiting for them to uh, move into position. The air brakes are really useful for this purpose because completely passively we can regulate how uh, how fast we lose speed. Uh, this is a really nice addition, not only for aero capture but later on for landing, because I can choose my landing position with them. So the faster I lose, the closer my landing position will be. And here it is what I what I came up with that I do not do a complete circularization, but in instead of uh, uh, raising my uh, periapsis, so this is where I want it to land, between those two landmasses where the uh, planes get uh, really, really narrow. And I think I could manage to do that. With this huge landing ellipse, uh, as I as I pointed with the mouse, uh, it's, it's quite easy. So instead of uh, raising my uh, periapsis, I made it lower uh, for the final orbit. Uh, so this is or, or already a uh, landing orbit, or a landing trajectory. And I moved it a little bit to the point where I wanted to uh, have it, so that I uh, arrive at the correct position. I still learning again the atmosphere of Duna because uh, it changed uh, again. So previously I was really good at it, uh, but now I'm <laughs> again uh, in uh, the beginner stage because of the drag changes. So anyway, <coughs> uh, as I arrive. Uh, the atmosphere, I just turned uh, on the air brakes and I waited for the things to fall out. There is a nice sunrise. It seems that I would lose speed before I hit my uh, target here, but this is an airplane, so I had to take this into account. This really glides uh, even in the atmosphere of Duna, even with this uh, very little lift, with these uh, small wings, uh, what it has. It glides uh, in the atmosphere of Duna. In the lift, th it seems that to me they, they didn't change the lift, but uh, they really did make uh, the drag uh, uh, smaller. And I think uh, I'm arriving here nicely where I wanted to uh, arrive. I didn't check finally where I ended up, but mm, I would say this is pretty good. I didn't have a, s a specific target, I could have landed. Uh, more precisely with the air brakes, so th those really help. And the final uh, part of this is, of course, uh, uh, just uh, pulling up before hitting the ground. And we can see that there is a lot of uh, lift uh, uh, on the wings and the body, so uh, this works well. Uh, this was actually one of the highest landings I did on Duna lately, so it's, it was more than one kilometer, the, the land, uh, the terrain altitude. And because of that, uh, I uh, hit the ground uh, harder than I wanted to, but uh, nothing uh, happened actually. I almost flipped over but uh, made it safely. So then I just needed to uh, choose my final uh, position. What I did with uh, the remaining uh, uh, speed uh, and uh, the brakes, of course, uh, I chose a nice horizontal uh, part to stop. And I had some cargo with me, 1.8 uh, tons dummy cargo with just fuel in the uh, cargo bay. But uh, this plane can be useful for some purpose, so maybe it shouldn't be called experimental anymore. So that was it. Thanks for watching. Bye.